news from Chibi. This says Crunchyroll president, Mr. Crunchyroll himself, says they will focus on short form anime because TikTok generation. <laughs> Woo! Are, about, are we gonna get 2x speed watchers for the short form animes too? Basically, you know, you gotta make it more optimal, right? Faster, faster, shorter, shorter. Floors. Crunchyroll explores shorter anime for shrinking attention spans in oh. the TikTok generation. Oh man. There's some cosmic irony in the fact that out of any anime that could be used for this article. Yeah, you chose ReZero, one of the most like sweatiest anime in terms of you gotta pay attention, you gotta figure out all the little subtle things they won't ever tell you. You gotta figure out yourself by understanding the themes of the show. And that's what's happening. Look at the fucking graph go down. Well, you have Natsuki Subaru crying. And FYI, ReZero is known for having like hour long episodes. So mm -hmm. the fact that of all anime that could have been chosen for this article, it's ReZero. It's funny because that is the one series that actually requires an attention span. Yep. And anyone that is theoretically having a really short attention span would not be able to uh, watch ReZero. And and hence that video we made, that Reddit post. Why do reactors seem to hate ReZero? They don't. Many people love ReZero, but a lot of people just can't keep up with the show because their brains are turned off watching it because they just can't give a fuck. You need to actually try. And definitely enjoy it. But anyways, that's completely not a part of this discussion. The point is, is that mm. I saw this article enter my feed late last night. And when I first read this, my reaction was more or less... Uh, amusement. I was amused by how something like this actually exists, and upon reading this article and figuring out, like, where this statement came from and all of that, it comes from two individuals. It comes from the uh, COO, and it also comes from the president of Crunchyroll themselves. And as long as the, the COO and the CEO, chief operating officer, as well as the chief executive officer, these are the biggest, like, decision makers that could possibly exist on this, you know, on, on the Crunchyroll, so like, I mean, as long as the short form anime, like, look, listen, listen, I love TikTok. I love short form content. I think it's such fun, digestible bits that you can just like, you know, consume when you're like commuting, you're just doing something else, you're like in, resting between sets of gym, right? Like, like there is a time and place for short form content, but there is definitely this trend of people only consuming short form content. And that then turns the brains off for a lot of people. You know, TikTok brain rot is quite often the insult used whenever people can't like sit down and watch something in focus. I wonder what's going to happen with like the volume of already existing projects and short form animations. Does that mean like existing animes? Like let's give an extreme example. ReZero, right? Does that mean ReZero will then be just turned into short form content? No, hell no, right? Studio White Fox and Nape, uh, Tape as a close connection. Maybe this will have to do with like uh, four coma anime. Like, do, do you think that this will make anime originals or like four coma? Like Gigi Harm, for example, that shit could be shorter down. It could be more concise. But the whole structure, the format is like uh, a sequence of skits. Maybe there are genres or a type of manga or like the source material that this short form content could actually be good for. So let's get into that. So let, let's just read the article and let's actually, you know, see what is really being said here instead of just the title to see if they're really talking about short form anime or trying to segue into more short form anime for shorter attention spans for anime watchers. Okay, so global anime streamer Crunchyroll is exploring the idea of shorter anime projects to suit the preferences of younger generations for short form content, such as that seen on TikTok, according to a new interview. Everybody just wants to copy TikTok, and I don't blame them, right? If you look at the amount of engagement TikTok has, right? If you look at the amount of time spent, like TikTok just fucking dominates, and you know, what matters is. The younger generation, because they're obviously the biggest demographic for consuming content, and maybe it is a good idea for Crunchyroll to maybe hedge in the direction of short-form content without sacrificing their long-form content. Um, Nike and Nike interviewed Crunchyroll COO uh, Gita and the president. That's a crazy name, Nike Nike X Trend. Your last name is X Trend. That's fucking cool. ...of Crunchyroll about the latest... No, 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 no. They interviewed CEO Gita. 
Maybe Nikkei X Trend is like an article. Trends concerning the anime industry. For those that don't know what a COO is, it operating is this. officer. It is a chief operating officer. You can pause the you know the screen right now. Like pause the video and you can big important see people what you actually do. But anyways, um, the president and the COO operator of you know Crunchyroll made a comment on this. When the pair were asked how they would believe anime will evolve in the future, the president evolve or devolve it replied with most anime are 21 to 24 mm -hmm. minutes long yep. meanwhile younger generations are used to watching short two to four minute videos one after the other on tiktok and etc obviously talking about youtube shorts mm -hmm. we need to think about how to tell anime stories differently than we traditionally have done do we do we really i don't think we need to man i think that tiktok short form content is totally different from what a standard anime episode is. And there is no need to pander towards that audience. Like, you do have already people that loves this format. Are you losing out on the existing children audience because the anime episodes are too long? Maybe. I don't know the exact numbers going into it. But just, just trying to force down short-form content because short-form content is popular on TikTok, is that necessarily a good idea? I'm not sure. If anything, maybe this is a better way to do it. What I've noticed is on TikTok, there's a lot of fucking um, parts of movies and the popular shows that goes up. <laughs> you know that one famous scene? I'm a, I'm a surgeon. No, Dr. Han. I'm a surgeon. I'm a surgeon. Like, the, the, the good doctor assumption, there's a lot of these TV shows and different movies that get short clips that gets a lot of views. And it's short form content derived from long form content to advertise their long form content. You know what I mean? So, like, rather than having... Just gutting this anime project to 21, 24 minutes long. Why don't you have to fucking figure out how to market your existing long form content through shorter, you know, variations, right? Don't just fundamentally change the way that the storytelling is done by just like removing or just like cannibalizing on this 21 to 24 minute, you know, format and making short form content, but rather advertise through clips and shit like that through Crunchyroll somehow. I don't know. I think that might be a better way to kind of like hone in on the balance of what already exists the anime ecosystem itself needs to continue to evolve now more or less i don't disagree with the fact that things need to evolve to fit with the times there's nothing inherently wrong with that statement it's like if a series or a company or a product lives in stagnation eventually it mm -hmm. will be long forgotten True. and people will move on to a better and shinier project it's why you know competition is very important it's why you know the whole one piece thing i talked about a few days ago with toe animation doing their own version of a remake while you have you know wit doing a full-on blown east blue remake you know which I think is fucking amazing. You no, know, it leads to friendly competition between two yep. different, you know, studios, and it allows them to really, you know, not stagnate. They try to innovate and be the best they possibly can. Absolutely, right? If there is competition in the same market and you're trying to offer a better service, a better product, then for sure that's evolving. But right now, this feels like it's devolving. What? Why, why is Crunchyroll competing with TikTok? They're not. Crunchyroll isn't competing with anybody. They're a fucking monopoly of distributing anime that exists. What they want to do is perhaps they think that they're missing out on the younger generation because they only want short form content. And then to entirely shift the existing model of a whole anime community and culture that exists that, or that watches this shit. And then you give them short form content. We'll see how it goes, right? All, like, all we're doing is yapping. There is no way to know until it gets actually made and then throughout like a year or two, see exactly how the growth is. Maybe it's a good thing. Maybe it's a bad thing. And so in this case, the president and the COO saying that they want to basically innovate and evolve with the anime ecosystem isn't inherently a bad statement. However, it depends on what direction. It could be a fucking stupid statement. I get it, right? Evolving, right? Making better products, competing. But who the fuck is Crunchyroll competing with? Why is a long-form, you know, distributor or platform of anime fucking competing with TikTok? There's no need to. It's better to integrate your shit such that maybe you can have clips to fucking market your animes that already exist so that they can do even better and captivate this younger audience that can only seem to watch shorter form content. Now, will they be able to convert? Will they watch clips and actually watch long-form content is a totally separate topic. And partly why I don't even like focus on shorts or TikTok, you know, content. If you look at my um, my TikTok or like YouTube shorts, I, I I think that it's a fundamentally different audience. I think that if you for it's it's like everyone just scrolling through just wants a quick little bite. They don't really care about 
sitting down and watching our long uh, video, even if that one minute clip was that enticing. Directionally want to evolve that said ecosystem if it does turn out to be bad, more or less. But anyways, let's continue reading. Um, it's not the first time that Crunchyroll has signaled, is signaled its intention to appeal to the younger generation's tendency to watch shorter content. Speaking again to Nike in August of this year, um, the president said, or no, not the president, actually the CEO said yep. the platform was exploring short form content like anime music videos, sure. as well as promotional content through platforms like there Twitter, it is. Crunchyroll's ex formerly Twitter account that has notably ramped up the posting of scenes from anime episodes Great. before inviting viewers to check out the series on its platform. Other than potential spoilers, they're doing exactly what I've been saying, right? So great. I've also seen this on YouTube. In fact, there was a little bit of con I mean, Crunchyroll already has, like, you know, on the YouTube channel. The, the, whoever's working on Crunchyroll, the clips, the titles are very, it's very clickable. It's very, like, it feels like there is someone within our generation actually, you know, making those titles. It's not some, like, random old, like, 50-year-old fuck that's just, like, typing up random titles. It feels like, okay, it's like a young person that actually watches anime. Controversy with Crunchyroll yesterday, FYI, it was very small scale, nothing too massive, but there was a, a chunk of the ReZero community that was pretty upset with Crunchyroll's translations yesterday, and ReZero- uh, What was it? Uh, Amelia is my waifu? I actually love that sub. <laughs> just, I don't know, something about that was just funny, even if it was supposed to say Amelia is my bride. There's some other things too. ReZero's translations have always been, um, controversial. Like, you know, when it comes to the light novel translations, to Crunchyroll's translations. N I can't say that. I can't say that. Is Crunchyroll trying to compete with TikTok? We don't know. We're trying to figure that out right now. Usually there are a lot of hit and misses sometimes to where they don't accurately translate them, but that's an entirely different subject. The point of the matter is, is that yesterday there was a brief little scene with Subaru when Regulus was holding Amelia. Yeah, and my Subaru waifu. said, Amelia is my waifu. <laughs> I and love that. It's very I genuinely thought that was more funny. I, I, I think that even if it's wrong, I felt like if it was intentional, I thought it was better. Be clear that the dialogue was changed to kind of make it more modernized or, you know, fit with like maybe promotional material. Because once that was done, Crunchyroll, a few hours later, they uploaded that scene on their YouTube account yeah. and said, Amelia is my waifu. Nice. Free Zero Season 3. So it was very clear they did like an inaccurate translation to promote a certain scene. Perfect. I think that's very smart. I think if you're like a source material loyalist, you're like, no, they can never take the creative opportunities to make the uh, differences that think might resonate with their like English speaking uh, native audience. It's like, no, 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 no. I, I think that this is like pretty smart in terms of getting a clip, in terms of getting like a catchy title too. Like, Emily is my wife, boom, it's gonna do way better than Emily is my bride on YouTube. So. That, that was a small-scale controversy yesterday, nothing too massive, I don't think it's that important, but it is, it does show that they are willing to change certain material to promote their said content. But anyways, let's get back into the article. Nevertheless, Crunchyroll's latest comments point towards going even further, potentially oh, reducing no, the duration no, of- no, 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 no! This is what I said! As long as you're not cannibalizing, right? As long as the existing projects aren't getting dropped for the short form content, we cook. But then again, maybe this is... So like, I was thinking that maybe it could be a good thing because let's get serious. This, there, there's this trend, right? The meta of seasonal animes is pumping out garbage slop, right? There's gonna be like 30 plus new seasonal animes every time. And 20 of them are probably gonna be garbage. Five of them might be just like, okay, and then a couple of them might be like diamonds in the rough, right? If you reduce the resources going on there, I don't think that reducing the resources to make short-form content there is going to benefit the long-form content, though. Obviously, right? Do you think that just because they're slowing down, they're not going to add more resources just because you're making short-form content? No, no, no. This is just going to be worse. Instead of like 30 garbage anime, we'll probably get 20 garbage anime instead some anime projects. The company which grossed over a billion dollars in 2023 from licensed goods Damn. is far from alone in this regard. Most recently, Masayuki Ozaki, president of Bandai Namco, welcomed to Demon School Iramakun Gintama oh, 2015 and present. Wistoria too. Wistoria uh, left the company this month to establish the- No! You motherfucker! You were behind Wistoria and Iramakun! 
You left to make this new company, Kratom 8, specializing in shorter anime projects? You weren't supposed to save us. You're supposed to save us. You're supposed to deliver us to paradise, not join the evil. The new anime studio, uh, Cred on 8. Don't know much about them. Bruh. Specializing in shorter animation projects, Jap uh, Japan based anime production studio Tokyo Epic announced this month that will set up an anime distribution platform and a new dedicated studio specifically for short form content. You know what the funniest thing is gonna be? Let's say the short form content comes out and I react to those and they actually do way better than anything else. I bet I'm gonna be happy as fuck. I bet I'm gonna be like, well, there's the numbers, boys. Short form is the meta. It could happen. Numerous NFT based companies. Oh, you already know this is not good when you see something like that attached. Yeah, uh, it's numerous not. NFT based companies such as Azuki also use short anime as a launch pad to enter the space. Azuki partnered with anime legend Goro from Code Geass, One Piece Film Red, oh, no. and Junichi Yamato, why uh, Raylana ended up Who? at the Duke's Mansion Who? for an anime earlier this year. Branded content creators like uh, Intertrend have also seen success with anime shorts for Toyo uh, Toyota. Okay. So, to make a long story short to this whole thing, the CEO, or the, the president of Crunchyroll and the COO, want to shift into short form content because the younger new generation audience. of fans, the younger generation of yep. anime fans that has jumped onto the ship since like 2019 to 2020 thanks to COVID, you know, they have a shorter attention span. They need that constant jingling of keys every few seconds to be able to have their eyes glued onto the screen. <sighs> it's no longer a meme anymore, man. It's like the jingling key shit. Like I, I thought that like how bad could it be? It actually is that bad. The, the, the younger generation, the Gen Alpha kids and the younger Gen Z kids, they are absolutely cooked in the head. If there isn't enough key jingling, then they're not going to watch it. And it's one of the big reasons why you see nowadays when it comes to certain anime, the anime that usually turn out to be very, very popular are those that have very shiny and flashy lights. Nothing against Demon Slayer. I haven't been telling you, bro. Listen. I love Demon Slayer. Alicia X Life Child got hacked? What the fuck? Completely random off topic, but I'll check that out after. Um, Demon Slayer, right? Movie tier animation, flashy shit. Kids fucking eat it up. Is there a deep plot? No. Does it need to have a deep plot? No. It's that simple. Just entertain. Shiny shit. Looks good against those series because some of my favorite series do that but one of the big indicators that really keep the younger generation probably on board to watch some series that is longer than three to four minutes is if they're very shiny and they're constantly wowing you with that dopamine hit of pretty colors so all i'm saying is is i do think that it makes sense why from a business perspective yep. why the per it's it's low-key smart right it, it, don't think of it in terms of your how what your enjoyment in anime is going to be but think of it as like a business trying to maximize money it is smart to understand the demographic that is watching their content and realizing that the younger audience that's coming in right the younger audience is very important you gotta understand what they want so you can deliver a product that fits to that market president and ceo would do this but from in a long term span of time, I don't think this is good for the quality of anime. And the reason for that is because it basically the, the president and the CEO has admitted that attention spans are getting shorter. That's not good. Like, legitimately, there is definitely evidence, probably some science to really study for these past few years, for the last four or five years, mm -hmm. on just how the younger generation. Their, their actual minds, their attention span has degraded to such a degree that they cannot sit down and watch like a 40 second video. It, it's just too long for them. Yeah, you need like a, two, three separate fucking monitors too while you're consuming a 40 second video, right? You got a 40 second fucking video, but you need to be playing a different game. You got to have subway surfers on a different screen. You need to have like, you know, a bunch of different shit on like seven separate monitors to keep you just going there. You have people doing 1.5, two times speed on certain that too. videos just to get to the good stuff of the video. People are fast forwarding on their life. Fuck it. I don't want to watch a 40 second video. Give me a recap video in, in, that, that summarizes the 40 second video in three seconds. Life, basically. That's what they're constantly doing. So there's a clear indication of some fundamental problems here. Now, I'm no doctor, no mental health doctor 
or anything like that. But it's very clear a lot of these companies, these studios, and everyone involved are very well aware of the short mm -hmm. attention span. We don't need to say it. If the companies are making these significant changes, they've already done the market research. There's a lot of people behind the scenes doing data analysis, you know, working with data at such a greater scale, trying to understand the interest of different demographics. Because at the end of the day, they want to make money. That's all they care about. And this is not just a fucking random decision they're doing. Kids are cooked. And these agencies as well. And they know it's potentially a problem. But instead of trying to correct the problem and helping, you know, this new generation out to lengthen their attention spans, they're wanting to make it reinforced to make it even potentially worse. The fact that you have like a CEO and a president wanting to dive into two to four minute content, that's not going to make the situation of shorter attention spans better. That's going to make it much worse. Now, one thing I did find out while looking into this topic is that anime production is getting more and more expensive. Now, mm. I don't know the exact raw numbers because I'm not like an insider, but if I had to take an educated guess, it's probably going through its own situation like the gaming industry and the movie industry from Hollywood. And FYI, if you want a quick rundown, basically for the last decade and much longer potentially than that, gaming and movies have gotten more and more expensive. As of late, one of the recent examples of this is Concord's failure. $400 million lost. Sony lost in that game. And you go back to like the early 2000s, hell, even the late 2000s, games at the most might have costed $20 million maybe, $30 million, way less than that. But nowadays, games are reaching into 200 to 300 million mark, and that's a lot of money. And so... Yeah, because those retards are fucking focused with fidelity over actual good gameplay. They're trying to create... They can't make good games. You know what they do? They try to make the fucking trees in the background more refined. And they, th they say, this is the modern gaming right and then they and then so, so there's already an incentive to you know make people buy more expensive hardware to you know keep up with that gaming so you have even more money going into these fucking projects right you don't have to fucking do this but they think that this is the answer and on top of that they do stupid decisions the dei the whole diversity and inclusion the whole like um we need to make these you know game characters you know ugly they need to be more realistic we need to show them what the modern gaming audience wants guess what Concord fucking failed immediately. Four hundred million dollars fucking gone out the window. Time and gone out the window. People's jobs all getting fucking axed, and everyone's getting refunds. When a company releases these set games, they need to, at the very least, at the bare minimum, break even with that money they invested in the product. And then, if they really want to make money to be able to continue, they need to make way more than that. So, like four hundred to five hundred million. So you get the point. As the cost of these different products get higher and higher it gets a lot harder to potentially continuously pump them out. And That's right. So what's the good idea for Crunchyroll right now, right? They're squeezed for money. It's getting more and more expensive. So if they're getting more and more expensive to keep making this content, maybe they could slash the budget to reduce down the long-form content, but not completely slash. Maybe for long-form content, the resource will be limited, but the amount that they've cut off, that much can now be distributed into prioritizing short form content and if they succeed then maybe you'll make money way more money and that's the, that's right now what about like the future right the opportunity cost from focusing on targeting these younger audiences short form content the ideal scenario would be for them to be enticed by short form content and so be so addicted that they may even want even more maybe that's not the right idea it probably won't happen, but my idealistic way of this is like young kids get into anime through short form content that then get converted into long form content. But I've seen through my own experience of, you know, making TikToks and shorts and trying to convert them into the actual long form reactions. It's a very, very hard sell as they're completely fundamentally different audiences. And the more short form content they watch, the more likely they'll push away the long form content. In this case, anime is probably going through the exact same problem right now, with more and more productions being picked up by different companies all around the world, anime reaching a new level of uh, global phenomenon, and so many people wanting to involve themselves in anime, different companies and stuff, it's causing the production and probably the cost of anime to go much higher. Once again, yeah. don't have a statistic, I don't have a number for this, I'm just pulling this out of my butt, but it just, it makes logical sense economically that the prices are going up, not just with inflation, but just the demand as well. So, thinking about that, them wanting to make short-form content to cut cost, that is a better, honest statement. Yeah. But, regardless say that. if that is the true reason or not, or eventually will be the true reason, I think diving into the let's just reinforce short attention spans 
is not the way. It is not the answer. I think this is a very short-sighted answer, right? Quite often, like, um, you want to fix the hole in the dam immediately, right? You, you, there, like, imagine there's a bunch of leaks happening, and you want to fix the hole in the dam immediately. So you just pull out these fast solutions that may satisfy in the short run. But what about long form, like long run, right? The sustainability. Is this really a good idea for the future? If they do this, maybe their budget, their, you know, overall like resources, right? Poured into it and the money they get out, it's going to be a lot better than what it is right now. But what about like five, 10 years down the line? What happens when you phase out the older audience that watch? Maybe they'll then just shift the entire fucking uh, long form content into short form content. They'll only focus on that. I don't know. Only thing we can do is just wait and see what's going to happen. The boomer in me is going with the doomer take of like, this is a short term solution that may sabotage what anime is as we know for the future. But maybe we're not target audience anymore. Maybe short form content is the future for anime industries in Japan and just globally. And we'll just have to see what happens. Answer, and it will only fundamentally degrade the quality of shows going forward, not just for anime, but for just entertainment. C-suite bonuses are based on quarterly stock price. CEOs give zero fucks about long-term health of a company. Absolutely true. 100% true. That's why they're fixated on short-term solutions, right? Ideally, they would think about the actual like company for a long-term sustainability. But the CEOs, the decision makers, they don't care. They have no loyalty with the brand. They're just here to get their quick cash out and, you know, appease the shareholders pressures for another quarter before they kicked out. And if they get fired, you know what happens? <laughs> this is the best part for CEOs. They get a golden parachute. A golden parachute is exactly what you're, what you're imagining, right? You get pushed out. Basically, you're getting fired, but it's a golden parachute, meaning you're getting like millions and millions of dollars in compensations to get fired and you get a new job and you repeat the same thing. CEOs truly are just the fucking lowest form of just like parasites in corporate society it in general i don't think it's a good thing to really try to reinforce stuff like this and so seeing this article it makes me amused i laughed a lot at it but i was just like we are really cooked i cannot wait to see or honestly i dread what the uh entertainment industry will look like not just anime but entertainment in general will look like in 10 years from now mm -hmm. judging by how we're already seeing companies outright admitting that attention spans have shortened to such a degree that they need to now shorten everything down to a considerable degree but okay i'll leave it at that though thank you so much for watching and i know that short form content already exists right even like the bbw elf anime that happened last season they those are short projects right it's not 24 episodes even that um rom-com anime that we didn't watch it was like uh i forget the exact title of it it was like there was like 12, 12 minute shorts right they exist but even if they exist Right now, what's happening is they're going to be reducing the volume, right, of long-form content. And I said that and maybe it's a good thing, right? Seasonally, we pump out so much long-form content, and they're all just mediocre slop that maybe it's better for them to take their time. But they're not taking their time. They're already limiting the budgets of long-form content. So it's not going to be 30 shitty animes coming out. It's going to be 20 shitty animes on the... 10 extra animes that got cut off from that project, that value will then be dedicated into putting out short form content. And then if those succeed, and I bet, I, I don't know, I see a situation where maybe um, the audience for consuming anime just changes fundamentally. Maybe in 10, 20 years, people will laugh at those that used to watch 20 minute long anime episodes. Maybe short form content will continue to dominate as people, you know, continuously just get sucked into the short form ecosystem. But only one way to tell is just wait. Right. And again, it just says explore shorter anime. Right. This is not a definitive decision making. They're just announcing ahead of time like, hey, we're thinking about this and you should be aware. So with that being said, please go check out Mr. Chibi's channel. Here's the link and I'll see you next time.